Welcome to this lesson on analyzing graphs. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at some key characteristics of graphs. And we're going to be starting with domain and range. And these are two very important characteristics when you're talking about any kind of graph. So domain represents the input values of a function or the x values. So we're looking at the x values. Range represents the output values or the y values of a function. So the y values up and down. So let's find the domain and the range of this function. So let's think about domain first. So domain is the x values. So basically, I want to see where this graph is going to have an x value. So if I go up or down from the x axis, is it going to touch the graph basically? Now, as you can see, this graph has arrows, so that means it keeps going forever to positive infinity and to negative infinity. So even though you can't see the graph keep going, I know that even out here, if I go up, I'll eventually touch the graph. And even out here, I'll eventually touch the graph. And the same thing in the negative direction. If I go up from this value, I'll eventually touch the graph. And it's going to keep going forever. I'll eventually touch the graph. So what that means is, at any value on my x-axis, there is a value on my graph. At any value on my x-axis, there's going to be a value where I am touching the graph, where I have a value on this function. So what that means is my domain is all the positive numbers and all the negative numbers. So there's a couple different ways you can write that. You can say the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Or you can say it's all real numbers. And the symbol for all real numbers looks like a capital R with two lines instead of one line. Okay, so that's domain. Let's talk about range. So now let me get a different color. So now we're talking about if I go out to left or right from my y-axis, am I going to touch my graph and where does it touch? So as you can see right here on this line here, I don't touch my graph. So I'm going to erase that line. So starting here on the y-axis, I start to touch my graph and then it continues on. Touching my graph, I touch the graph, I touch the graph. And remember I said it's going to keep going forever. So no matter how far I go up on my y-axis, I'm going to still touch this graph. So what that means is my range, and remember range is y-values. My range is from negative 3 up to positive infinity. So I'm going to write that like this, negative 3, and I'm writing a bracket because it actually does touch at negative 3. And I know it's negative 3. Let me erase all this so you can actually see. I know it's negative 3 because look, 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So it's touching at negative 3, and it's going to keep going up and up and up for forever. So no matter how far I get up on my y-axis, if I go out left or right, it's going to be touching this graph. So it's going to go up to positive infinity. And when you're writing infinity with this notation, you always put parentheses because it's not an actual number. It just means it goes forever. Okay, so that's one way to write the range. Another way to write it is the range is all the y values greater than or equal to negative 3. Because it starts at negative 3 and it continues up for forever. All right, so if you're a little confused about domain and range, we're going to do more examples, so don't worry. Let's keep moving. All right, let's talk about continuous and discrete functions. So a continuous function is a function where the outputs are a range of values. They are continuous. So basically the graph 
keeps going. It doesn't skip. It doesn't have jumps. The output for this is going to be going forever in the negative direction and forever in the positive direction. Or another way you can think about it is look at the domain of this. Let's practice domain again. So remember domain is where I'm hitting on the X axis. So if I start here, I'm hitting the graph, hitting the graph. I'm going to hit the graph and this graph has arrows, this line, so it's going to keep going forever. So no matter how far out I go, I'm going to hit this graph. And that's going to be going forever in the left and the right direction. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. So this is a continuous function. It keeps going. It doesn't have jumps. It is continuous along a range. And then discrete means a function where the outputs are distinct values. The domain consists of individual numbers. Okay, so the domain here is a little bit different. The domain here is all the x values of these individual four points. So for example, this point is at negative four, two. So the domain would be just negative four. The range would include two. This point is at negative two, zero. This point is at 1, 1. This point is at 4, negative 2. So instead of the domain being a range of values, it's just distinct numbers. Because as you can see, this graph, it's not connected, it's just individual points. So it's discrete. So try these examples. Let's go over the domain and the range and determine if it's discrete or continuous. So number one, it's probably easy to tell that this is a discrete function because it's just individual values. Another word for this is a scatter plot, which is in the statistics unit, but it's just a bunch of points. The domain and range for these kinds of functions are just the x values for the domain and the y values for the range. So it may help if you write down the points first, the ordered pairs. So let's do that. So this one is at negative 5, 4. This is at negative 3, 0. This is at negative 1, 2. This point is at 1, negative 2. This point is at 2, 3. And this point is at 4, negative 3. So the domain is going to be negative 5, all the x values, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 2, 4. And since it's discrete values, that's why I'm putting it in brackets. And then the range is the y values. All right, number two. This is a continuous function because it's connected. There's no jumps. It's not just dots, points. And the domain is a range of values. What I mean by range is it's not just individual points. It's going to be touching even in between those points. So all of these are part of the domain. OK, so the domain for this Remember, domain is where is it touching on the x? So here, here, here. It's going to be touching at all of those, but it's also continuing on forever in the negative and positive direction. So since it goes forever to the left and forever to the right, it's another way to think about it. It includes all the numbers, all real numbers. Remember, you can write using that notation and then range so range we're looking at up and down so down here I'm not touching anything on the graph 
not touching, not touching. Starting here though, I touch my graph. So the range starts, this would be at positive one. And it continues up and up and up forever and ever because it's going up and up on the left and the right. It's gonna continue touching the graph as far up as you can go to infinity. So my range is gonna be starting at negative one to infinity, or you can write y is greater than or equal to negative one. And it's y because we're talking about the y values on the y-axis. Okay, zeros of a function. Zeros are the input values that give an output of zero. And on a graph, you can tell where the zeros are by looking at where the graph touches or crosses the x-axis. So the zeros here would be here, here, and here. So my zeros are going to be negative 3, 0, 1, 0, and 4, 0. Notice all the outputs are a 0. That's why it's called a 0. Pretty easy. All right, intervals of increase and decrease. So an interval of increase is where the graph rises from left to right. And intervals of decrease is where the graph falls from left to right. So let's do increase first. So you can see on this graph, there's a distinct point where it stops falling and it starts rising. And that point is about right here. So all of this part of the graph is increasing. And then over here, remember you read it from left to right like you read a book, um, decreasing. So for my increasing values, you always use your x values to determine where you're increasing and where you're decreasing. So I'm increasing at x equals 1 and then I'm continuing on forever because the graph goes on forever. Okay, so I'm increasing where x is greater than 1. We're not going to include 1 because that's actually where it changes from decreasing to increasing. So it's really not doing either. It's just kind of that's the breaking point. So it's increasing when x is greater than 1. So it would make sense that it's decreasing when x is less than 1 on this side of the graph. All right, so let's try some of these. So number one, we want to identify the zeros, the intervals of increase, and the intervals of decrease. So the zeros here, there's only one where it crosses the x-axis at negative one zero. And then remember, read it from left to right. This graph is always increasing. It's never decreasing, so there's only intervals of increasing. And this graph goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So it's increasing for all real numbers, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. And there are no intervals of decrease. All right, pause the video and try number two by yourself. Okay, so there are two zeros at negative five zero and at one zero. And we do have increasing and decreasing here. So we're increasing from here all the way until we get to this point. So we can kind of divide the graph into two pieces. So it's increasing from negative infinity until we get to, pot to negative 2. We're not going to include negative 2 because that's where it goes from increasing to decreasing. So at that exact point, it's actually just doing nothing. It's just being still. And then it's decreasing from negative 2 until positive infinity, all the way on this side of the graph. Okay, you can stop the video now and complete the practice.